Then let's look at uh, another contrasting method, the averaging method. In this case, we are asked to use all of our database of x values, the data values, not our forecast, but the data. So we just average up all the x of 1 until x of t. Remember, x of 1 is the oldest piece of data that we have in our database. So if we have 1 million piece of data, then we have to average 1 million times all the data. Now, there are you know, faster ways to do that, but the idea is to take the average of all. In other words, the assumption is let's use uh, a lot of past data to uh, educate us about the future. Right? Because uh, one of the say wise thing is that the more data we have, it, the, the better we can tell about the future. right? And that is uh, kind of true if you have dull data. Okay, uh, if your data is not highly fluctuating, but rather it is very dull, uh, hardly moves, right? Sometimes, you know, goes up a little bit and then goes down. So why is it that when we take a lot of averages of the past and it helps us to do a better forecast? Well, let's take the situation of uh, not Lieber Brothers, but trading rice, a rice trader. So if I'm doing import export of rice, example, I'm doing a uh, hundred tons, all right, every cycle. And uh, to the extent that rice is consumed by people, to the smaller extent by, by animals, um, we don't expect, you know, fanciful rise and drops in the consumption of rice. So as a, as a trader, when I buy rice, when I import rice and sell, I will not try to adjust it too much, right? At least not over on, on a year to year basis. Over a decade it might show because of population increase, it might show some gradual rise or gradual fall, but it's not going to be on a year to year, uh, cycle by cycle basis, uh, extreme fluctuations. But let's suppose uh, somehow in a year we we had an increase in in the this rice consumption. I had to import a lot, right? Now forecast next year's uh, import quantity or demand so that I can adjust for import quantity. So this is demand, right? In the past it has always been hundred tons, sometimes ninety five tons, hundred and two tons. But then for the recent year T time t it was 115 tons 15 percent more all right 15 percent more uh consumption of rice than before and there is no reason why from within a year population has increased by 15 percent see so there is no good way to understand why this is the case but data shows that so what do we do are we going to say, hey, look, next year, uh, demand is going to be 120 tons, so we better, you know, start importing 20% more than before, right? So what happens? What should we do? So in this case, beforehand, a priori, we already know that the data pattern is going to be dull. It shouldn't be changing that much, right? And we therefore adopt uh, this algorithm, the averaging method, which has built into it the, the DNA that data doesn't change much. So if we do that, then our forecast for next year, in this case, will be 100 tons. Forecast for next year, 100 tons. 100 tons, right? Uh, forecast for next year, 100 tons, ends up being 95 tons. But you know what? We are going to average it with so many of the 100s in the past that the next year's forecast is going to be 99.9 .9 tons. Right, because there, there are a lot of hundreds in the past. So even if this is ninety uh, or ninety five, we will end up averaging to about ninety nine point five, ninety nine point nine. Right, so it's about hundred tons of import. Now next, uh, uh, um, up to here, we forecast hundred tons end up being hundred fifteen tons. Our job now is what happens to our t plus one. Right, so what is our forecast for t plus one? Should we say 120 tons or should we 
uh, be educated by the lots of past data. So the averaging method tells us let's use all the all the axes. So we have a lot of hundreds behind us, a bit of 95 here, and then we have 150. So it will be increased or hold up. The, the, the predicted value will be will rise by a little bit, but not as high as 150, definitely not 120. Right? Because of the hun many, many hundreds of weights behind that will pull it down to 100. So let's say the forecast is 101, example. So we're going to buy 101 tons. Does it mean that we'll lose business because the actual demand will be 120? Turns out it comes back to 100 tons again. Fortunately, luckily we didn't uh, buy too much rice that we have to throw away or get rid of at some cheap uh, uh, price, right? So what happened? Well, the thing is that we don't know what happened that caused the demand to jump up by 15 tons. Maybe it's because of uh, humanity aid that Singapore exported to other countries. Maybe it was because of a one-off effort, uh, some sort of military exercise or what have not. We have no idea. But ends up for that year, it was 115 tons that uh, was uh, the total demand. But that is not going to be a repeating pattern. Why not? Maybe we are wrong, but then we have a lot of past data to back us up, right? So, so between assuming that it is going to be a new trend out of nowhere, right? And we know our business, we are, we are, we are the business of, of trading rice. Out of nowhere, there's a trend that goes up by 15 tons or 5 tons every year. No way, right? Because that's not our business. So if we use averaging method on the data series that we know has the terrain of a flat line, it doesn't change much. There's no reason to change much then yes, the more past data we have, the more it educates us that when there's a glitch, right? when there's a glitch like this, there's, there's a jump in the data, don't get excited. Calm down, right? Calm down. Yeah, we'll nudge up by a little bit, 101 tons, but don't get so excited. It's not something that is real or repeatable or going to sustain us far into the future. 101 tons. And turns out to be right. Okay, so now you see that our posturing of the data, what kind of trend terrain does it have, you know, and that assessment is coming from external data, non-quantitative data, like we are rice trader, rice is eaten by humans, and there is no jump if there is no jump in population. Yeah? So, so that is the idea behind uh, how we can feed such non-quantitative uh, a priori information, very important, into the choice of algorithms we make, and thereby improving the quality. In other words, the error will be reduced in the forecast values.